another podcast from Candlebark Creatives. My name is Louise and I have set up this podcast to share positive, encouraging and hopeful aspects of life. And today's guest is Caroline Ashworth, who runs her own business called Chroma Kitchen. Caroline is an inspiration for the way that one person can be quietly efficient and organised and self-motivating and yet still have time for a large extended family, friends and the local church. So without further ado, let's get into it and find out more about Caroline and Chroma Kitchen. So welcome Caroline. Hello Louise. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you. (laughs) So I understand you run your own business in Chroma, called Chroma Kitchen. Can you tell us what that involves? Well, as you can see, we are on our allotment Mm. and this is where the work starts (laughs) for the the business. Um, We grow all sorts of things here. Amazing. Mostly um, things that I then use for making jams, chutneys and cordials to sell for Chroma Kitchen. But a lot of it is also used by ourselves and our extended family. Brilliant. Do you ever run out of food to make these? Yes, I mean last year we had um, no tomatoes so I couldn't make any tomato chutney because everyone's tomatoes got blight last year. Um, So no tomato chutney. Oh dear. (laughs) Okay. How did you get started with Chroma Kitchen in the first place? Uh, Well, I'd taken redundancy from lecturing Mm. and was caring for my mum. And my husband had been poorly in various ways um, and wasn't able to walk far, wasn't doing anything much physically. Mm -hmm. But as he recovered, having had an operation, um, he decided he wanted an allotment. Fantastic. So that's what happened. And we soon discovered that we were producing more stuff than we <laughs> and the family could use. And I started making things and it sort of snowballed and grown from there. And how long ago was that? That, you, um... that was about eight years ago. Wow, you've done a lot in eight years. Yes. Wow, <laughs> that's brilliant. What do you especially enjoy about your work? Oh gosh, there are so many things. I love, I love being here, mm. outside and enjoying the quiet and the peace. In all weathers? In all weathers, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not that we've had any rain to contend <laughs> with for a long time. Everything is extremely dry. Yeah. Um, I enjoy my grandchildren being here as well. Yeah. They love it, all the small ones. Yeah. We've got a little toy-sized, child-sized wheelbarrow and they love filling that with soil or filling it with stones, which is very helpful because yes. it helps clear the stones off Absolutely. the lot. Absolutely. They help with planting, <laughs> harvesting, all in between and uh, are learning a lot about nature. Yeah at the same time and they also come because some of the things that I make are from forage produce yeah. and the grandchildren come with me to forage yeah. and so are learning about where things come from. That is so and good. I uh, wish I knew more about that. <laughs> You'll have to take me yes, foraging I had, one day. Yes, um, my, well he was four at the time, um, could recognise an elder wow. tree without seeing any elderberries on it. Brilliant. Oh, elderflower, yes. That's impressive. Yeah. Mm. So what do you find challenging in what you do? There's an awful lot of work. Um, Yes. From um, keeping on top of the allotment, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time harvesting. Yeah. Um, and obviously once things are harvested they then need to be dealt with, processed and then they 
jam, chutney or whatever yes. has to be made. Yeah. Um, and then I do have some in some shops, but mostly I go to events and yeah. sell my produce. And set it all up and everything. So that mm. is yes. weekends doing that as well. Mm. Um, so there is a, an awful lot of work yes. involved. Yes. So that's challenging. Yes, I could imagine. I could imagine. And another question, how do you manage to run a business like this from a relatively small kitchen? Um, well, obviously it's our, my home kitchen. Yeah. So I have, it's sort of L-shaped and I, when we moved in, had a, um, an island or a, yeah, yeah, yes. an island put yes. in <laughs> where I do most of my preparation and work for the business. Brilliant. Um, when I'm using it for the business, I clean everywhere down yes. and keep it to prevent any cross contamination. Yeah. But there's plenty of space. Yeah. To that's brilliant. You know, if I keep that area sort of separate mm. Mm. For, for work. It's brilliant. And I have two rather large jam pans, <laughs> which I I use. <laughs> Both of them at the same time, mostly. My goodness. <laughs> I don't think I've ever made any jam, or perhaps once. <laughs> so I'm very impressed. <laughs> what was your life like before Chroma Kitchen? <gasps> well, as I said before, I took redundancy from lecturing. And, and what were you lecturing in? I was lecturing in early years. I'd been a an early years teacher and a special needs teacher um, and then I went to teach early years and some health and social care yeah. um, level three level four and level five um, which was 24 7 I could imagine yes yes yeah um, yes. <laughs> so when I took redundancy didn't have any income no. apart from you know what I got for carers allowance for me. Yes. Um, and yeah so basically it was running around after my mum <laughs> for a long time yeah, yeah. Hmm. or quite a while yes did, how did you manage during lockdown uh, I had more time to spend over here mm -hmm. because yes. obviously it was you know, we weren't locked in the house locked in the house no. because we could be here outside mm. with no one else yes. around yes. Um, so we were able to keep on top of the allotment a lot more I made a few things I sold a few things to people um, who you know are regular Yes. Clients, I suppose, yeah. or customers. Um, but really, it was just, yeah, enjoying. Yeah. Enjoying the time. Enjoying the time, yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't make any money, really, but. No. I got the grants from the government. And that's very and good. And that's, yes. that's what sort of enabled me to. Going. Carry on, yes. That's brilliant. It's not a big business. No. It no. it doesn't bring in much money at all. But, but it's only you and your husband, I believe. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. so uh, yes, he uh, does a lot of the stuff on the allotment. Hmm. Do I gather that you do the fruit and he does everything else? Is that right? Mostly, yes. Yes. Yes, I do some of the other things as well, but yeah. he doesn't have anything to do with the food. No. <laughs> that is my domain. <laughs> Hands off, yes. Yes. Well more more it's you know things like fruit bushes and fruit trees and things yes. that are there. Yes. So digging around and weeding around them is not his idea of uh, fun. No. fun. <laughs> not that it's my idea of fun sometimes either. No. 
but you can see an end result to it yes yes that makes yeah. a difference doesn't it <laughs> yes it does okay yeah. next question is what advice would you give someone wanting to start a small business at home um don't be too ambitious mm -hmm. when i first started out i did try i did jewelry i did cards mm -hmm. i did the jams and chutneys <laughs> i did i can imagine you yes do that. <laughs> yeah i did quite a few different things yeah um but it doesn't work no. you need to have a a, a niche like a focus really a yes. focus yeah 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 brilliant um, and you know mine has developed into being a business that is made everything made from homegrown and forage produce brilliant yeah. oh that's fantastic so perhaps we could have a look at your allotment in a little while yes but before then how do you market your produce from start to finish Okay. From seed onwards. Oh, from seed onwards. Yes. Well, I take photos of the allotment as things are growing. Yes. Um, and where do and they post go? them on yes. Facebook. Brilliant. Um, I'm in the process of having a website made as well. Great. Um, and I have a shop on Facebook. Yeah. On my Facebook page. Got yourself a piece of soil. Mm -hmm. Tell the listeners how you would actually go about growing something. Do you grow it all from seed or do you ever get seedlings? No, we grow from seed. Okay. Or cuttings. I mean, things like the, um, uh, the gooseberry bushes yes. or the fruit bushes. Yes. Um, you can strike those. Oh. So you strike a branch yeah. and mm -hmm. it will root out. Sting it was a stinging nettle. Oh, <laughs> nasty stingers. We are sitting in one of the <laughs> untidiest, <laughs> wildest areas of the allotment. But beautiful but flowers. Beautiful yes. flowers and lovely for the yes. bees, yes. which we encourage as much as, yes. as possible. Yes, because I asked you earlier about your sage and do you let the flowers grow? And you said it's a beautiful experience listening to all the bees, didn't you? Yes. Yes. And they come up, so oh, you leave the flowers yes. on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because the sage will still taste similar, won't oh, yes. it? Yes. Won't, won't. Because some plants, they deteriorate if you keep the flowers on, don't they? Some, some do, some yes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. no. These it's, are more it's, important. It's a, as important, if not more important, to have the bees yes. and uh, the pollinators around. Mm, brilliant. We do cover the brassicas so that the um, cabbage whites or the white oh, butterflies yes. small white large white not cabbage white there isn't such a thing no <laughs> as we had a lot of those last year and they got through the netting even though we bought a special yes. netting that wouldn't yeah. wasn't supposed to but anyway what are your two favorite products that you my favorite either products. grow or produce i love hedgerow cordial Ooh. which is Blackberries, elderberries, rose hips, and wild plums. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I really enjoy drinking that hot. Oh, winter time. Oh wow, well, we must Obviously. get some of that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, which you know, full of vitamin C and antioxidants and everything, and you know, and really tasty. So I love that. And Make sure you get some listeners. <laughs> <laughs> and probably a majority of my chutneys, because I yeah. love chutney. Yeah. I really, you know, I could eat chutney. And you do all sorts of chutneys. They're I do all yeah. sorts. My um, most recent one um, is I named Rooty Fruity, which is <laughs> parsnip, celeriac, apple and the onion oh. and then a few spices yum, yum. Um, and that I'm really pleased with actually that's Good. really nice yeah so you create your own chutneys oh yes wow. yes yeah no recipes. I mean jams are jams really <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're doing basically, basically you have 
you have the fruit and then the same amount of sugar okay. to make a jam. Right. And do you always um, use white flat, white sugar, or I use white sugar. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I don't, however, use jam sugar. Okay. If anything needs more pectin, yes, then I have um, windfall apples. Yes. I boil <laughs> up and mm. then reduce, uh, put through muslin, reduce down, and yes. use as pectin. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I don't use anything synthetic. Right. Yeah. That's fantastic. So how can, I know you've mentioned it once before, but how can people really find you if they would like to buy some of your produce? Well, I can be found on Facebook. Yes. In the kitchen. Yes. Um, they and I'll put all these comments in the, in the description yes. below. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can come direct to me. I put um, events on yes. Facebook that I will be at. Yes. Mostly when I have time to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So and you mentioned a web page might be coming up. A web page might be coming up. People can't buy from the web page, but it will be linked to the Facebook page. Yes. Um, yeah. And then a few shops, really at the moment, is Jarrell Chroma yes. Yes. and East Runton Stores. Brilliant. That's it. <laughs> well, that's a good start <laughs> at the great. moment. Yes. Oh, that's so, lovely. Yeah. Well, perhaps now is the time to look around your allotment. Yes, that would be lovely. Thank you. Okay, so I gather, uh, Caroline, you've got um, some hedges you've sort of created yes. here. Yeah, so we've got sage down this side and thyme down that side. Yeah. And when it's all out in flower, yeah. And you walk along here and continuous sound of bees. Those are the bees it's, we were talking about, weren't they? Yes. Oh, absolutely fantastic. wonderful. And um, are they all the same sort of sage? Oh, I've no idea. I think so. Oh. Yeah, okay. I think so. Mm. Mm. Smell wonderful. And then just down here is oh, my goodness. newest hedge which is growing along here and that's um, lemon balm. And that's gorgeous mm, too. Oh. It is. And that I use in courgette jam. Oh, we, we love that. <laughs> and the courgette jam is my alternative to marmalade. Oh, because I, I don't grow oranges. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to carry it on down? Um, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. And you've done that but from a seed, seed, a sort of seed? No, they're, they're just <laughs> seedlings. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Brilliant. That have come up. I mean, a couple of the ones at that end had come up in the fruit cage. Fantastic. So, <laughs> and Make some have been <clears throat> donated by a friend. Wow. From another allotment. Okay, then yeah. we've got a load of other stuff here. What is this? Yes, yeah, so we've got lots of onions and lots of leeks here. Right. Um, All sorts of onions? And mostly we've got red onions. Yep. And we've got um, shallots. Ah. So the shallots will probably be pickled and given to people for yep. Christmas, yep. rather than sold. <laughs> and the red <laughs> onions are used in lots of chutneys. I think we might have some more further down there. Right, okay. Because um, this is just the start we of haven't, it. Yes, we, I don't think we've got any white onions this year. Ah. I'm not sure. Okay. And at the top it's there, hard. you've got some things you were growing as well, right by that road, haven't you? Oh, well, we've got some old blackberries, Yeah. Um, just ordinary brambles that I've kept. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some damsons in the hedgerow. Yes. Up at the top there. And just down the side over there are French beans. Oh, right by the fence. Yes. Fantastic. Yep. And in there over um, in the boxy bit um, are cauliflowers. Wow. And we've never been very successful with cauliflowers. No, I can't say I have either. No. Apparently, no, I saw something on YouTube the other day that if you've got a little head of cauliflower coming, mm. you put some tights over the head and it will grow with it. 
and it stops ah, the um, stops it from nasties, bolting. and it stops the nasties getting at it too. Ah. So you might try that. Yeah, might do. <laughs> You've got some old tights. They need. They need. To, I probably have. I don't wear them very often. No, really <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear dresses. <laughs> um, yeah, but they also need a lot of manure. Yes, that's you know, true. They're very, very hungry. So where do you get your manure from? Um, well, we have, um, I have a friend who has, has horses, so yes. I can get horse manure from them. Um, we used to have chickens opposite. Yeah. And we got chicken manure from them. Yes. Um, but now we get some chicken pellets. Yeah. Um, but also we grow comfrey. Ah. Um, we we'll go and take a picture of comfrey in a minute. Yes. Yeah. Which the bees also like and the pollinators yes. love. But it's an incredibly horrible smell. So you pick it and you put pick it and put it in water. The whole plant. Just all all the leaves really. Yeah. And then yep. it just sort of mushes up. And, and how long does it take to ferment to? to get to a point where you can use it? A few weeks. Okay. I mean, the longer you leave it, the better. And, and yes. what we tend to do is put a load in and then yeah. use some of that water, add some more, fill it up with water and just keep it going. Mm. So, wow. Yeah, sort of a continuous thing, really. Yeah. Okay, now that is signing out from Candlebark Creatives and Chroma Kitchen. Thank you all listeners and check out Chroma Kitchen on Facebook. Thank Bye you. for now. Bye.